Do cables matter? Welcome to Lancaster Hi-Fi. Let's talk cables. There is some debate in the Hi-Fi community about whether cables matter, but it's a curious question. Obviously, you have to have cables, so cables matter because you can't transmit sound without cables. But you've got a range of options now, don't you? You can go with the really super cheap, like these. You can go a few steps up, or maybe just a couple of steps up to your sort of 20 or $30 cable. But the other day, I listened to a, I think a $4,500 cable, phono cables specifically. My listening partner didn't tell me what he was doing. He just, you know, he went back behind his stereo and like, you know, fiddled around, you know, plugging, unplugging, whatever. I didn't know whether he was swapping out components or what exactly he was doing. And then we listened to the same song again. It was really curious. It sounded better, but it, it, it was hard to pin down what exactly was different, except that it, it really did sound different. You know, it wasn't like, oh, that sparkly bit is sparklier. It wasn't so night and day, but it was pretty obviously different. So I'm, I, I look over it and I'm like, is it my imagination or is it, is it quite different from the last? And he's like, no, it's not your imagination. He pulls up on his iPad, uh, the homepage or whatever related to the product. And I'm like, oh, holy shit. Because those are expensive cables. And in his system also, you know, he has speaker cables that are like, you know, the bundles like this big around. He's even got them on these magnesium risers. And he kind of laughs at himself a little bit. He's like, I couldn't imagine that, that putting them on risers would do anything. And I was testing these products. And so, you know, I used them. And damned if it didn't sound just a whole lot better. You know, his system is pretty high end. I think he said his speakers are like between 40 and 50k range and you know sort of comparable price points on on all his various components. So one question might be do cables only matter in a system like that? And where is the point of diminishing returns? Should you weed cables like this out of your system and go with, say, 20 to $30 cables? Or should you be buying $100 cables, $1,000 cables, $10,000 cables? Because I, I think that's even a thing. I've heard it said on the internet that you shouldn't buy $10,000 cables if your system in total only costs $1,000, that you should only spend, say, a certain fraction of your total system cost on cables, but that you should spend a certain fraction of your total system cost on cables. And I must say that I have been very skeptical of whether cables matter at all. That is, I have generally thought that this was just fine, and that literally I would find no difference between something like this and something that costs $20 or however much more. What's my reasoning? Well, I mean, this is a, these are shielded cables. They're not tasked with passing a whole lot of current. And so they can be pretty thin. That is, I don't see that relatively thin thickness as a problem. And, you know, I tend to think, well, pretty much copper is copper. If it's 99.999% oxygen-free copper, I, I don't understand how that's going to be a significant improvement over just plain old pure copper. That said, I have spent a bit of money on cables. Currently, I will say I've spent less than $100 on cables. Uh, I bought a couple of nice sort of fabric-covered cables from Amazon, mainly for their looks and also wanting to get relatively specific lengths so that I didn't have lots of cables all over the place. And then more recently, I got another cable pictured here. Predominantly, I got this one because I was looking for a relatively short cable. I wanted a cable to go on the back of my system of a stack 
to go from CD player to the preamp. It only needs to go, you know, this far, so I didn't want any more than a half meter cable. And one of the options was this cable. And it has some features. It's like thick and burly, it's silver plated, it has these locking plugs. But I didn't really think it would make a difference in the sound. But I thought it was worth doing the test. As long as I spent $23 on the cable, as opposed to this, the one that I took out, did it sound any different? Whether it sounded better, you know, is even a whole other question. Did it sound any different at all? So I set up the camera. Before I made the change, I did the listening test, or I recorded a couple of songs. My new Steven Wilson remix of Gentle Giant's Freehand. And then I swapped the cables and did another recording. And damned if it didn't sound a bit different. But it wasn't any kind of night and day difference that I could hear, but it seemed like it did sound a bit different. Luckily, I also had the recordings where the camera was in exactly the same position before and after. And the only thing that I had changed was the cables. Now, I will say, actually, that's, that's not quite true. If you watch the video, I had to move my stack forward about that much to accommodate the cable, because it's a much stiffer, burlier cable than these or even the other sort of 20 to $30 cables that I have. And then I look at the waveforms, and the waveforms are a little bit different. Not dramatically different, but I can see some differences in magnitude. And then I pick out, you know, just little samples like, okay, here's a guitar note. Here's a bass note with a cymbal crash. I've got those in Audacity, and I sync up the signals, you know, very carefully. Take the exact same snippets of the two, and then plot the power spectrum for, the, for both of them. They're different. Not dramatically different, but different. Now, let's see, how exactly are they different? I can go through and I can look at the relative magnitudes of the different peaks in the spectrum and find that, first of all, almost all of the magnitudes are a little bit different. Maybe not the relative magnitudes, right? But the, you know, this one is minus 3 dB and the other one's minus 3.2 dB. Differences of that sort of order, not huge differences. But then you, as you're going down like, okay, what's the first, the second, the third, the fourth, the fifth, the sixth, the seventh, and eighth largest peak, at some point there's even a difference. What's the fifth largest peak in one spectrum is the sixth or seventh largest peak in the other things like that. So the complex of harmonics that you're hearing in the music is different in one cable relative to the other. And I was not expecting that. Now, when I look at the, you know, the entire two songs and compare the relative volumes of the two, they're, they're the same down, you know, out to three or four significant figures. But when I take an individual note, like a bass note with the cymbal crash, uh, the guitar note, there's a little bit of difference in the relative loudness of those two, in the relative volume. Generally less than a tenth of a dB, though. We're not talking a big difference. But it wasn't always one way or the other. Often, this one was a little bit louder for the individual note than the thicker 20-something dollar cable. Hmm, that seems a little counterintuitive. I'm not sure why that would be. Maybe this is picking up noise. That could be a thing, right? This could be picking up extra signal. I mean, I'm just spitballing. I don't really know. All I know is that I can report 
and I can show you the evidence, and here it is, that they sound a bit different. Not, again, not dramatically different, but a bit. And that's just going from a freebie sort of cable like this that I probably got, I probably got this with some gear back in the 80s or 90s, to a 20 something dollar cable. Now, do I have the sort of system where if I went to more expensive cables, I would also be able to hear an additional difference? And if I say went another order of magnitude, say I went from a $20 cable to a $200 cable, would the difference be similar to the difference going from a $1 or $2 cable to a $20 cable? <laughs> and let's be clear, the difference between the $2 cable and the $20 cable was pretty subtle. We're not talking a dramatic difference, but a noticeable one and a quantifiable one. That, that's the thing, it's like the, the sound was not 10 times better, right? <laughs> and, and we all know that's not the way hi-fi works, right? You can spend a modest amount of money to get 90% of some unattainable 100% perfection, whatever, right? And then you spend 10 times that much to get to 99%, and then you get spend 10 times more than that to get a 99.9% .9 and so on. And where we would put those percentages, whether it's 90% to 99 or is it 90% to 95, that's sort of around where we're quibbling over whether spending a lot more on a system is worth the money. I think we do generally agree whether we all admit it or not. You know, when we're talking about spending a lot of money on a system, we're generally talking about, you know, incremental improvements. Those incremental improvements often seem very worth it to us because that extra couple of percentage points or whatever, uh, as we get towards that sort of ideal perfection, if that's even a thing, you know, it, it draws us into the music. It gets us a bit closer. It, it, you know, look, music interacts with our brains. Those of us who love music love the way that music interacts with our brains and we don't want to be distracted by things like noise although maybe we do in some cases we enjoy the way the music the sound interacts with our brains and you know those even incremental improvements can improve our enjoyment quite a lot and and can be worth the money therefore uh, and I'm pretty sure, you know, I can say now, yeah, it was definitely worth going from this sort of freebie, and we'll just call it one or two dollar cable. I think it was definitely worth it going to a twenty dollar cable. And so now I'm wondering, well, is it worth it to go to a two hundred dollar cable? Well, probably not in this system because there's there's no component in my system that I've spent over two hundred dollars on. I mean, my my system is relatively modest. That's not necessarily the right way to look at it, is it though? Because the fact that I haven't spent <laughs> over $200 on any of my components doesn't mean they're worth less than $200. This turntable here, definitely worth more than $200. The cartridge that I just got on this turntable, definitely worth more than $200. But I didn't spend that money. So do I spend $200 on a cable? I don't see myself doing that anytime soon, but I could see doing that at some point when it seemed worth it. But before I would spend $200 on a cable, and I don't think this is a controversial position, I should probably spend some money on room treatments and that kind of thing. You know, before I spend $200 on a cable, I should do something about that bare concrete back wall. Before I spend $200 on a cable, you know, I might want to invest in something a little more substantial to, for my turntable to sit on than a piece of half-inch plywood. There are things that I should probably spend money on to get significant improvements in sound quality before I spend anything like $200 on a cable. But I think at this point, spending $20 or so on a cable is, is worth it for a couple of reasons. It does change the sound in measurable and perceptible ways. And the $20 cable looks so much nicer than this old crap. 
<laughs> you know, so the extent to which I actually see the cables, I'm, I don't have a problem with admitting that I, I like the way my system looks. I wouldn't put pretty pieces of, of hand-tooled wood on my tube amps if I didn't think that looked nice and if I didn't get some enjoyment out of that nice appearance. So I think the aesthetics of the cables are are just fine, and that's and and honestly, that's really why I spent the the money in the first place. Although I will say, I didn't really expect to see the cable that I just put in there, the the twenty something dollar cable for my CD player. I just thought, you know, I've got decent cables interconnecting all the other things. This is the one like freebie cable left in this system, maybe I should think about switching that out for something a little more substantial. So would I recommend that you spend a lot of money on cables? Well, no, not necessarily. I'd recommend that you spend whatever you think you ought to spend on cables, though. I do recommend the 20 to $30 cables just based on looks, but also they do change the sound. And I, to my ear, they change it for the better. If you have a very expensive system, should you go to $200 cables? Yeah, maybe. But what about $2,000 or $5,000 or $10,000 cables? I don't know, man. But let me change gears a little bit. Do certain interconnections rely more heavily on cable quality than others? So when I heard that four or five thousand dollar cable that was a phono cable that was a, a cable from the turntable to the phono preamp and i've done a little bit of refresher reading or or even new reading in morgan jones about phono interconnects since then now morgan jones says that one of the first things you ought to do with your turntable is replace the rca cables with balanced cables balanced interconnects he says that, say you've got a moving coil cartridge, that's fundamentally a balanced signal coming off of it. That is, two leads going to a coil. Neither of those leads is fundamentally different from the other, right? There is not one of them that should be ground and the other that should be signal. That is a fundamentally balanced pair of leads. So his statement then is, if the signal coming from your phono pickup is fundamentally balanced, why unbalance it? That is, why, why tie one of them to ground? And there's a good reason for leaving it balanced, because then as I'm, as I'm running these cables from the cartridge, you know, through the tone arm and then to the preamp, and it's potentially picking up noise, if it's balanced, then the noise that each of those wires picks up is going to be the same, generally, if if the cable is kept balanced. That is, that, that each of the leads, the positive and negative, have identical capacitance to ground and resist and impedance to ground. Then it stays balanced and the noise will affect both the same. The important thing being that then you have common mode noise that then a differential amplifier will reject. And so there's a fundamentally sound reason for using balanced connections between your phono pickup and your preamp. And then he, he specifies exactly what sort of properties that those interconnects should have, essentially saying you should use twin axial shielded, fully shielded cable, but not just any twin ax. Well, I have a bunch of twin ax cable that I've used in in my research, and I, I wonder if I ought to be using some of that for my turntable now. <laughs> that said, though, I don't have a, I don't have balanced connections on my phono preamp or any of my, I don't have balanced connections on any of my gear. So, before I do anything like that, I'd def, I'd need a preamp with balanced connections. That is, again, simply to say, you know, there can be particular cables, and I can at least understand why phono cables should be a particular target for improvement because the signals are so small. The gain going from the head, the cartridge, to the speakers is so great 
you want to do everything you can to minimize noise and reject noise. And using a balanced connection allows you to use common mode noise rejection that is in a differential input to a phono preamp. Now, how much ought you to pay for those cables? Again, I think the amount that you spend on cables needs to be commensurate with the cost of the rest of your system. You know, don't go spending thousands of dollars on cables when your whole system only costs a couple of thousand dollars to begin with. Definitely before that point, spend money on room treatments. You're going to get a much, much bigger bang for your buck by hell, even just, you know, tacking some some stuff onto a concrete wall, uh, putting some something to break up reflections on your ceiling, that kind of thing. So fundamentally, that's really my recommendation that that a I was pretty surprised that cables mattered at all. And so, yeah, I, I think you ought to spend just a bit of money at least if you're using something like this. B, past that, put money where it's going to make the biggest difference first. And so going from, you know, a couple of dollar cable to a $20 cable, it's probably worth it, even just for the aesthetics, if nothing else. But it will make a bit of difference in the sound. But you're still going to get a pretty big bang for your buck by spending a little bit of money on room treatments and so on relative to spending, say, hundreds of dollars on cables. So spend hundreds of dollars on room treatments or maybe not hundreds of dollars, maybe, you know, some DIY stuff that's a bit cheaper than hundreds of dollars. But but still spending hundreds of dollars on room treatments is going to get you a much bigger effect than spending hundreds of dollars on cables. And then finally, you shouldn't be spending more on cables than any other component in your system. Think of it this way. You're, you know, if your system is only as good as its weakest link, if all of your components cost, you know, 10,000 and up, then sure, a $2 cable is definitely going to be your weakest link. And maybe even a $20 cable is then your weakest link. And it makes sense to start spending a bit more on cables. And I would not have said that before doing this test. I would not have said that before doing this test. I have to admit that because I didn't think that it made any difference at all. But the data show that it does make a difference. It being the cable. <clears throat> Dang. Yeah, that's a hard one. <laughs> I just didn't, I mean, it's just a cable. It's just got to go from here to here. And, and, and it's not a big, a lot of current that it's got to pass. I, yeah, it just kind of, it kind of blows me away. Well, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, give it a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel, leave a comment. You know, I'm open to all sorts of opinions. On some level, what I'm showing you here and just talking about here is just data. Because I can't even say for sure that, you know, the, the different frequency spectra attributable to the two cables, I can't necessarily say that one is better than the other. All I can say is that they're different. I can tell you that my ears perceive the difference as better with the new cable. See, that's not really just my ears, that's my brain, and my brain is subjective. So, take that as you will. Hope you enjoyed the video. Have a great day, and I will talk to you soon.